Do you install sound systems in houses of worship? Perhaps you install sound systems in sports bars and restaurants. Do you ever tackle large projects like stadium and arena sound systems? Maybe you put sound systems in banquet halls and event centers. And you might install sound into larger classrooms and lecture halls. If you work in any of these kinds of venues, then it's imperative that you really understand the principles of constant voltage distributed sound systems. I'm Neil Weber. And I'm Clay Stalker. And today, we'll help you take the mystery out of designing and installing constant voltage distributed sound systems, and we'll help you understand the basic building blocks that make these systems efficient, cost-effective, and, believe it or not, really great sounding. Okay, Clay, so what determines whether we should employ a distributed sound system rather than a traditional 8-ohm direct-to-voice coil system? Well, Neil, it really all comes down to the number of loudspeakers that you need to properly cover any given space. Now, you know it's easy to understand when we assume a bunch of ceiling speakers, right? But we typically don't consider distributed sound for sound systems that maybe utilize delay or fill speakers for sound reinforcement. And you know, we really should. But Clay, distributed sound systems don't sound very good compared to low impedance sound systems, right? Bzzz. Wrong, Neil. That's really a prevalent opinion, however. But in order to understand why we really have to dig into what a constant voltage distributed sound system really is. So, for today, let's think of a power amplifier connected to a loudspeaker. Now, the amplifier has an 8 ohm rated output, and we're using about 50 feet of 16 gauge speaker cable to connect to an 8 ohm rated speaker. So, let's say that the amp outputs mm, 60 watts into 8 ohms. Now, let's use this handy little chart to find what our transmission loss is. We have a 16 gauge cable running about 50 feet. So that gives us 11 or half a dB of loss. There it is. Now, that's not really too bad, right? But what it gives us is 53.4 watts out of that 60 delivered to that speaker. Now, if we run maybe 100 feet or so to a second fill speaker, which, as you know, would give us a 4 ohm load, we'll lose about 21% of our power, which equates to only 47.4 watts delivered to the main speaker. Now, you can see that the 100-foot cable losses probably are somewhere around 38% of its power or can be expressed as delivering about 37.2 watts to the fill speaker. Now, of course, we know some amps are able to push more output to a 4-ohm load, so that it helps some. But you get my drift here. This shows you that the sound level is uneven across multiple speakers. So Clay, I want my church to rock. What happens when I need to add more speakers to cover that area in my church? Uh-oh. You don't want to do that, Neil. <laughs> Seriously. You could wire the speakers in a series parallel manner to get to 8 ohms, kind of like this drawing. But as we showed, the loss over the long cable runs will start to add up, making the volume at each speaker uneven. And in a series circuit, if any one of those speakers happens to go bad, they all turn off. You know, just the, like the light strings on your Christmas tree. I hate that. Yeah, so do I. And then, of course, you could buy more amplifiers, which is really good for staring. But if we had to look at the physics, you'll see why constant voltage distribution is a much, much better solution. So let's begin with looking at where constant voltage distribution really comes from. To derive the concept, we have to consider the laws of physics and, more specifically, Ohm's law. Now I'm guessing that most of you already have a pretty good handle on Ohm's law. 
But what this really tells you is that voltage is directly proportional to current and inversely proportional to impedance. Now, that means that as the voltage goes up, the current goes up, and that when the impedance goes down, the current goes up some more. Now, understanding this basic principle of physics, we can now look at what that means in our real world. Now, in AC power distribution, we discovered that between the power generating source and your home or business some miles away, there was such a resistive power loss that varied with the length of cable that there was real little chance that a consistent voltage could be delivered to the end user. So, as we found earlier, we could have added more power generating stations or used much larger gauge wire to minimize resistive power loss. But just like the undesirable choice of adding many more amplifiers to a sound system, that didn't make practical, cost-effective sense. So way back in 1949, it was decided that we would use Ohm's Law to our advantage to reduce or lower current flow to reduce the effect of resistive power loss due to that I squared R heating of the power cables. Now by adding step-up transformers at the source to raise the voltage and lower the current, we can therefore use smaller gauge cable and achieve much greater distance. Then we use a step-down transformer to give us the 240 volts we need at our homes or businesses with increased current capacity that meets the needs of our communities. So, if I have this right using Ohm's Law in my calculator from my sophomore year in college, in a standard 8 ohm system like the series parallel one that burned down my church earlier, <laughs> if my 8 ohm amplifier is outputting around 20 volts, then each speaker will draw about 2.5 amps of current. Right you are, Neil. And in this system, the total current draw through the speaker cables would be about 22.5 amps. Radio. And according to the Giddings table here, I would need to use about 500 feet of 10 gauge speaker cable, which is a lot of expensive copper, and that's for a 60 watt amplifier? Yeah, no kidding. And it might be fine for, say, a 1,000 watt amp running subs, maybe, but for all your speakers, that kind of cost is not very practical. So, if we take the lead from our power company, and put a 70.7 volt transformer at the amplifier and one at each of the speakers. That'll solve our problem. So again, using Ohm's law, we're going to transform the 8 ohm output of the amplifier stepped up to a high impedance. Oh, let's say about 50 ohms. And that means that the current will proportionally decrease now, in the example we were using before, it takes it down to about 3 amps. So, we can now use this cost-effective, thinner, maybe as little as 22 gauge wire, or whatever inexpensive stock that we might have laying around back in the shop. We then use a step-up transformer at each speaker, and we have plenty of power at 8 ohms to drive the volume that we need. And to address the question about sounding badly, transformers, you know, especially these low-cost transformers, like the one you see here, have had a bad time saturating when they're driven, especially with strong low-frequency signals. Now, the more iron in the core, the better they are for less saturation. But nonetheless, it was still kind of a problem. So in order to eliminate that saturation of the transformer's core, manufacturers would roll off the base in their amplifiers. And this is where the old wives' tale of bad-sounding distributed sound comes from. And not too many years ago, it really was true. But today, with the dawn of rare earth toroidal magnets, like you see in this picture, that kind of saturation is really a thing of the past. But make no mistake about it, great transformers are not inexpensive. Now, before we take you through what you need to design and deploy a successful constant voltage system, 
I'd like to refresh your memory and reintroduce you to the Grass Valley ADVC G Series product line that we affectionately call G Bricks. The first one is the ADVC G1. This is a wonderful video and audio converter that takes any video input and converts it to SDI with embedded audio. It's a perfect solution for any video application because you can take an HDMI, DVI, component, composite, or even S video signal with analog or AES digital audio and output it to 3G, HD, or SDSDI that lets you run long cable lengths to a video switcher, a recorder, or a streaming encoder over a single coax cable. And with an integrated frame synchronizer, the ADVC G1 will deliver a frame lock picture wherever you're going. Now, next up is the ADVC G2, HDMI and SDI to analog and SDI converter. So this unit takes HDMI and 3G HD or SD SDI and converts it to 3G HD or SD SDI and analog component composite and S video analog and AES digital outputs. The ADVC G2 can be used as a monitoring device for HDMI and SDI sources, but it can also be used as an HDMI to 3G SDI converter. The cool thing is, is that this box also has a nice built-in frame synchronizer to give you rock-solid video output every time. And we have a few remaining of the ADVC G4s. This is a 9-output sync generator with 48K word clock output for and a video reference input. So. If you're looking for tri-level HD sync for locking your audio to video, or if you need to lock multiple cameras and even a switcher, this is the top of the line when it comes to a compact sync generator. So, please remember Starin when you're in need of the finest pro video plot products on the planet. And let your sales team know of your pro video opportunities so we can get them designed and quoted for you. Remember, you don't have to know the part numbers, the options, the power supplies, or any of that. We'll do all that for you as just another personalized service from Starin and Grass Valley. So, now you understand why you choose a constant voltage sound system. So, Clay, can you help show us how we would uh, properly design one? Sure, Neil, I can. So, let's get this one thing out of the way first. Always choose a high impedance amplifier that uses high quality toroidal transformers, like you see here. Or, you can use a direct drive high impedance amplifier, you know, like those great lab grouping amps. This way you can throw out the idea that these systems sound bad. Now, let's start from the speakers and work our way backwards. Now today, this is not the time or place to discuss loudspeaker placement. But remember, we're talking about full coverage with minimal overlap that would cause some phase anomalies. So keep that in mind when you're you know, planning your speaker layouts. And dig this, Clay. Our great friends at Bosch and ElectroVoice provide you with some helpful tools to facilitate simple room design for constant voltage distributed sound systems. You don't have to be Stephen Hawking here. They have the ceiling speaker placement calculator and ease address acoustic modeling program that you can download right from their website totally free. So, once we determine the number of speakers and their placement to get us the coverage we need, what do we tackle next? All right, Neil. In this example that was taken right from that EV software Neil just described, we have 36 ceiling speakers to give us the desired coverage. So, according to that provided chart, we'll need 512 feet of 16-gauge speaker cable plus, of course, the length that you need to run to the equipment rack. It also shows us the proper amplification requirements. Now, as you guys all know, men and women, this constant voltage distributed sound is often called 70 volt sound. Now, that's really an incorrect nomenclature. Because since audio is not a continuous constant amplitude signal, a 70.7 volt constant voltage sound system actually delivers up to 100 volt peaks at a 70.7 .7 volt average. So the rule of thumb here is that you'll always choose an amplifier that's at least 1.5 times the needed output in watts. And this is important. 
All right, Clay, so let me see if I have this right using my sophomore calculator, my sophomore brain, um, and this chart. <laughs> I'm tapping each speaker at 7.5 watts times 36 speakers times 1.5 for peak headroom. And that gives, <laughs> gives me 405 watts. Yeah, it would have been a lot easier to just look at the screen, but that's okay. <laughs> You're exactly right. So what you'll specify is an amplifier with at least 405 watts output into a 70.7 .7 volt load. And remember, everybody, choose one with the good toroidal transformers or one with the direct drive 70.7 .7 volt output. And no matter where you're located, you can now get all of your Bosch and EV equipment directly from your partners right here at Starin. So when you need assistance in putting together your constant voltage di distributed sound systems, you can call your Starin team and we'll be glad to get you the right equipment for the job. All right, Neil. So before we run out of time today, let's give away a gift card for one of our lucky friends. <laughs> 